This video is going to be dedicated to a solo flawless spider of the Watcher dungeon on a hunter. For those who just want to see that, then skip the timestamp so that I can show you the weapons, the build, etc. So there's a couple of different builds we're going to be using. Well, some alterations on one build per se. So as we start the dungeon, we're going to be starting with this. So the super choice will be Golden Gun Marksman, as it's a very useful super for the first boss. So we'll just stick with that. Then when we get well, then when we get to the final boss, we'll switch to Blade Barrage. Dodge is Gambler's Dodge. Knife Trick, Heal and Grenade. Aspects are on your mark. Knock them down. Fragments are Ember of Solace, Ember of Empyrean. Torches, Char, Ashes. So the first build that we're going to be using is with Assassin's Cowl. So you can go invisible and get health back off powered melee kills. This is going to be the main focus for the first couple of encounters and the first boss fight. While... We're doing the first boss fight. We will switch to Celestial Nighthawk for DPS. So bring a Celestial Nighthawk to swap to. It's n there's no equipment locked in this dungeon, so you can do that. So that's something that we'll, we, I will be doing. Just to cover the mods on this particular build, we've got hands-on linear fusion armor, we'll finest seek and wells, elemental charge, overload SMG, SMG loader, void damage resistance, concussive dampener, high energy fire, linear fusion rifle scavenger, recuperation, melee well maker. And then the class items that never change in the whole thing is weak and clear solo operative. We have another build though. That's not so that's that's the main build with an alteration of switching to Nighthawk for DPS. Build two is this. Which bear in mind I end up changing these stat distributions when, when I'm actually in the run. So I ignore this, but obviously we'll be tier 10 Brazil when we're going through it. Just because I've got a badly rolled uh, star is that that's all it is really. But the mods for this, because this obviously this is going to be a super build uh, about you know getting burst DPS on the final boss. So obviously Starry is scales to overcharge your super with orbs of power. The mods for that were Elemental Armaments, Harmonic Siphon, Rocket Launcher, Ammo Finder. This will be switched off SMG Loader to Rocket Launcher Loader. Elemental Charge, still Overload SMG. Void Damage Resistance, Concussive Damage again, High Energy Fire with Melee Wellmaker and a Rocket Launcher Scavenger and with the same class piece. Weapons wise, we will always use Exo Exotic Grain Launcher with a hard. we will always use Callus Mini Tool. Uh, we will start out with uh, Fallen Guillotine on the very first couple of encounters. When we get to the first boss, we will swap, swap to Taipan. Out of courtesy, if you do not have a Cataclysmic 4x uh, the Charm Bait and Switch, so I, I do have that. I'm just using it out of courtesy of people who don't. That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing the same thing I did with the Warlock run. Uh, and then you want yourself a good rocket launcher. Hothead is fantastic, obviously. Field prep cl uh, clown cartridge. I'll talk more at length about rockets and what rockets are good in this dungeon um, when we're at that particular boss. So you want a good rocket, a good linear, and a good sword to bring. Um, but that's the builds that we're using. So for the purposes of editing the video and the run itself, I didn't feel as though I wanted to do much commentary on the initial encounters as they are, as you see they are. So I just sped them up. So they are literally only here, the interlude sections, so like the starting section and ascend the spire, and then the, sec the intermission section after the first boss leading to the second boss. All that stuff's only here just to show you that obviously it was sort of flawless because obviously if I didn't include it in the video at all and just included the two bosses, um, people could say well it wasn't so flawless because we don't know you, we didn't see the rest of the run so the full dungeon run is here but i've sped up all the intermission sections where you're going from encounter to encounter uh and even at speeding up the ascend the spire section the actual first encounter where you shoot the fuses only and just sort of build the tower to, to get to the first boss um all this stuff sped up because i have nothing to talk to you about it if you want to know something particular, something specific about the, the this, these sections, then ask me. But I've already covered these at length on the other two runs um, about them. If you're brand new to these fuses uh, and how they work and all that stuff, then you need to start from the beginning, which this video isn't really going to be good for you. So I suggest that you start with watching my Titan run or my Warlock run because I've covered it a bit more in depth. But I've got to the point now where there's not much, as I say, I can tell you about this. There's nothing for me to talk about. I'm stuck for words.
because you are just shooting fuses, running, shooting fuses. There's no engagement with the ads. You don't need to have any engagement. You don't need to do um, any combat. It's just you need to know the position of the fuses. That's it. Start and finish. That's it. But there'll be obviously where I'm going to give you the in-depth information is going to be at the bosses because that's where people w want to know what did you run for this what did you how did you deal with that how did you deal with this at the main encounters not the not these interlude sections so that's why i've sped it up like this i know it's probably bad to watch i recommend you just skip it it's just in there just to, as i said just to obviously show you that the full that the full room was legit and it wasn't pieced together or something like that that's all now I'll slow down the footage and, and play it properly and then this is obviously the first boss fight so how do hunters fare in this dungeon? Well, they fare really well. Uh, warlocks are obviously amazing. Uh, warlocks pretty good at the first boss fight. Exceptional at the, at the final boss fight. Whereas the hunter is exceptional at the harpy boss fight, but also really good at the final boss fight, but not as good, not quite as good as the warlock because of the well a radiance thing where it's giving you like 92 percent damage bonus which is a technicality because technically it shouldn't be giving you anywhere near that right so if that wasn't considered hunter would win this as in the best character to solo flawless on in my opinion with my build i've got on a build where i can have constant restoration because i've got um the ember of empyrean on and we've doubled up our restoration and radiant with solace compare that combine that with those two then with a good solar primer like callus mini tool and you're unbeatable people say the survivability is nuts on titan i i beg to well i don't beg to differ but i actually think hunter can give titan a run for the money because of you know it, i mean all classes all classes have access to that i guess all soul 3.0 classes but obviously you've got your knife trick as well, which kills enemies, just like what a hammer would. Yeah, I mean not always. It's a bit inconsistent. It's knife trick at times, but it's really good for scorching. Uh, there are other options of knives. You can use the proximity knife, stuff like that. It's up to yourself. But obviously, if you kill that enemy, you'll get your knife back. So yeah, the the solo hunt is really really good, and it's got everything you want. It's got the DPS. It's got the survivability and Nighthawk. Golden Gun is the best super, I believe, on the Harpy Boss. Because the Harpy Boss is a precision style boss. It's you know weakened to precision style damage as opposed to like explosive damage and stuff. Right? Um so like rockets, walk with coil and stuff like that. Um ain't the play, obviously. Right? It's snipers, it's shotguns, it's linears. Linears above all else. So how I do this fight, to break it down, pretty simple. I start the fight by getting my buff off the Minotaur, obviously. That's the first thing. Complete all four runways or catwalks. Complete all four catwalks, then you're on ad duty. This is a console Pacific. If you're on PC, you won't need to do this as much. Um... It's to do with flinch, it's to do with stuff like that. The harpies are going to flinch you. And if you're losing precision damage because of flinch, then you would have been better off in the first place killing those harpies. Now, I know I've only got an SMG on, but you can swap to a, a bow if you want at any time. I didn't. I don't need to because I, I fight the harpies down below like that. So I'm within just around about SMG distance to take them out quickly enough without swapping. So that's, that's your job. Your four waves of harpies which are linked that ad spawn is linked to each catwalk that is completed the chain the electric current that's where you get your waves yeah but now what we're going to be doing is um making sure that we're maintaining charge of light we're going to do the strat where you kill all enemies on the catwalk so you don't leave any any enemies up for the fact that you're not gonna um you'll be less likely to flinched by goblins and stuff and they'll just get in your way and aim assist. Aim assist is a huge problem on console with this dungeon. Alright, it's a huge problem. Uh, now on other platforms, it's a little different. You haven't got aim assist messing your aim up. Yes, I said it, it's messing people's aims up. It's not helping us. I mean, it will help you in PvP and stuff like that or whatever. 
right? But when when you're DPS and a boss and a goblin just ports randomly right in front of your aim, your cursor will drag to that goblin no matter what. Uh, and it's very noticeable. It's the most notable pieces of gameplay I've played, like, in a while for, like, aim assist being a problem. Generally, it isn't, but it, it, it is for this. So for DPS... You want to make sure you strafe shoot the eyes. Now I'm I'm using mini tool. There are other options, other slightly better options actually. But mini tool is the middle ground, I would say, as it stuns eyes in 10 seconds, around 10 seconds, which means that you have um, 20 seconds to DPS the boss. Because how you what you need to understand is whether you're on PC or console, it doesn't matter that way. The DPS window is 30 seconds. Now, what do I mean by 30 seconds? Well, I mean when the uh, when the when the harpy opens its eyes, that's when DPS starts. DPS does not start once you've shot all the eyes. The time has actually already started, so you get a 30-second damage window. With um, but that's including you having to stun the boss, so they're not split up. They're the same timer, right? Which is why, when you're on console, your DPS window is shorter than on PC. Because if you're, say, stunning in three seconds with Car Eason Coordinate or a Trace Rifle, that means you've got 27 seconds of DPS, as opposed to a console player taking 10 seconds to stun the eyes. They've only got 20 seconds of DPS. So you can see how the DPS is skewed. It's, it's, it's sort of... It's not what it appears to be. Right, because of the fact that stunning, uh, stunning the eyes is involved, incorporated into DPS, which is a huge problem. So, if you want to go to other options, there's a couple of options come out there. Like a lot of people are saying, there's some good hand cannons, like 120 RPM hand cannons that do the job. There's trace rifles. The coordinate is the most one, the the mo the option that I'm most shocked by when I saw that, where you can destroy the eyes in bolts and sort of strafe them. I haven't tried that on console yet. Um, I may do at some point, but I was just w wanting to just sort of use mini tool to be honest, just because it incorporates itself in the build. And if I'm putting coordinate on, it means I'm running double special. Not a fan of that. Obviously, I can always swap to mini tool and use coordinate and try and do that. But it was too much of a fuss, too much of a hassle to me. I, I like just to sort of use one loadout, one. I like to limit my swaps in dungeon runs. I don't like it where you use loads and loads of different weapons and loads of different builds. I like to sort of stick to one static setup for people. Uh, that's just how I, I sort of prefer it. Obviously, there is incentive to swap because Golden Gun ain't going to do you any good at the final boss, but it's going to be amazing here. Now, I, I think the note is that Radiant improves the damage for Celestial Nighthawk. So make sure, uh, Alex, I'll, I'll talk you through the next DPS phase because um, just slowly, obviously, just to, in the order that you should do things. Obviously, I'm not using Cataclysmic out of courtesy of that somebody that wouldn't have it. So somebody could log on tonight, copy this setup, and they wouldn't need to go and uh, craft the Cataclysmic or go and get it. They would need to craft a Taipan, which I highly recommend. That don't just use any regular old Taipan that you picked up. Go and craft it. The quest has been out at any age. Anyone can go and craft this. The only thing is you've got to level it to 16. Level that thing up to 16 before you even start your dungeon solo. Then come in. Because it's the second best option, I think. However, I haven't tried Fire and Forget. The stasis, uh, the new stasis linear. So I don't know how that plays in this. Right? Try that out. I don't know. I don't know how well that does. I, I literally haven't had much time to even play seasonal content, to be honest. I haven't hardly got any of the seasonal weapons at all, to be honest. I haven't had time because it's just constantly leveling. But now things are um, starting to be leveled and stuff. I'll start to engage with the season properly and look at all the weapons like in full depth. Because whenever you, if you know me, you know I like to look at something in depth, like to a fine detail on the differences between weapons and stuff. I haven't had the chance to do that. I have an idea of some of the other weapons that are out, but I don't know all the nuances with all the weapons, right? So, <clears throat> DPS, so how you want to start this, obviously, do your mini tool, do your drag shot, because there's a delay on the eyes when they're shot. So just do a couple of bullets, two, three bullets per eye, and just, just scan your way. I can do one wing, well, well, one side of the boss within 
one mug. So I'm, I'm getting all eyes in three mugs. Two mugs if you're good. So Wibber Horde, debuff, right? And then your knife, then Golden Gun. Then the rest of the damage should be Taipan. Try and get 11 to 12 shots of uh, damage in if you can. Now these, you can see these goblins are giving me issue with my aim. They're milling me in the back and it's just a nightmare. That's, that's a critical... That's a, um, a good example of why I don't leave goblins up during DPS. They are a pain. I hate it. Because obviously it is a good idea keeping goblins up because you can get font of my gun and stuff like this. Um, but obviously Taipan's void. I'm on a solo subclass, so I wouldn't get no benefit for, for the font of my... And that's where I would be losing a bit of damage as well. That's why you see people, develop, people can solo two phase, three phase, easy... Because they'll be utilizing some font of might using Cataclysmic, which Cataclysmic is the number one choice to use on a solo for this. Right? It, um, so it's a case of. I understand not everyone's got it. So, your next best bet, I, your next best bet, I believe, from what I've saw, is Taipan. There is another solar. Um, there is another solar linear that you could take advantage of font of might and do that, but it's only got high impact reserves. Forget the name. Corsair's Raf. That's it. Corsair's Raf, which is a decent linear, but it, it's perk pool is outdated. Needs updated. Needs updated and sort of put into Zer's loop pool, and I think it is in Zer's loop pool and sort of give it new rules, maybe. So it's rinse and repeat from here, as you can see. So this is a comfortable four phase. We'd optimize damage. You could three phase even with type on, I think. If I'd shot eyes quicker, because remember, there's a 30 second damage window per phase. So, say for example, I shot the eyes six, like within seven seconds every time, and I was perfect with mini tool on console. Then I would have two, three seconds extra of damage per phase. So that would result in the three phase. And if I don't screw up with my radiant and and, and all that, make sure I get radiant before I pop my Nighthawk, um, then the, the, you could solo free phase. And I'm on about weed Taipan. Before you comment and say, well, you could solo two phase. Yeah, I know you can. You need, you need Cataclysmic. Without it, you're not doing it. Without it, you're just not doing it, you know? So, yeah. Obviously, I'm not using it. So, people have got to understand that. My damage will be reduced automatically because I'm not using that weapon. But it's not a realistic solo to put out there. I mean, I've done it on the Titan with Cataclysmic. It's not realistic because not everybody has. If people have Cataclysmic. It's pretty common drop. But you see plenty of people have it, but not everyone has the enhanced perks and everything going on that weapon that you need. You need the exact role to perform the correct DPS. Whereas Taipan is accessible to all. So I, that is very... I like access accessibility weapons. That's why I use them in videos because it's the video... It's not a run for me. It's a run for other people to follow a copy, emulate, to help them. It's not to help me because I've already got the emblem. What, I, what do I need help with this for? But other people do, do need help with it because it's still a rare emblem. So just bear that in mind when I'm making a video on it. I understand that it's not number one loadout, but it, the loadout's um, decided upon of what weapons are accessible to people. Mini tools accessible to people. Um, Weaver Horde, I don't know what the deal with that is. If you weren't around in that season, how do you get that or not? Is it part of the monument now? Can you buy it? I'm assuming you can buy it. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't keep an eye on that stuff because I've always bought Destiny expansions. I've always bought them and I've always sort of got exotics as they've come out. So I never keep track of what happens if you don't get this weapon this season and all that stuff. I don't know. But I feel as though most people have with hard. Uh, we're all obviously cycling between the Assassin's Cowl setup and Nighthawk. We're only ever switching to Nighthawk when uh, for DPS. To be honest, I've probably went overkill with the build. You don't even need Assassin's Cowl. This encounter is seriously really easy. Uh, in terms of the ads and everything. There's no nothing t a threat to you. There's nothing a threat to you. You, It's a DPS fight. It's weighted to that. It's weighted to how good are you at doing your damage. Not so much how you are surviving with ads. So this dungeon as a whole 
He's catered to certain types of players, I feel. It's weighted to that. It's not weighted to who people who enjoy the combat experience of things. It's weighted to people who optimize font of my elemental time dilation, high energy fire stack and this, that, this and that stack. And you know what I mean? All that sort of stuff, which is more raid-esque type players. And it really caters to those a bit more than the casual solo player who isn't really into buff stacking too much. Not as hardcore as some people where the where they're switching between element, you know, switching between uh, mods, swapping off a, a class piece to another class piece to, to get a higher font of my timer to like 25 seconds as opposed to 10 and all that stuff. Most soul players aren't doing any of that stuff I've just mentioned. And it might go over a lot of people's heads, what I've just said. So yeah, that's why I haven't sort of done all that stuff. Which, but I'm, I'm full, totally aware of what pe players are doing. And it's smart. It's really clever. I'm not saying it isn't. But... It's not a realistic solo for people to copy. So you can see the damage. Pretty straightforward. Like I say, if you're hitting your 10 to 12 sh type hand shots, plus a Cecil Nighthawk, plus being radiant before pop and super, y you're a comfortable four phase. If you optimize a little bit better than me, you could maybe three phase on this loadout. It'd be tough going though, and you need to get better with the eyes. Maybe if I'd swapped a Cartison and done the little trick there and had a far longer damage window, then I could achieve a better uh, phase. But I haven't had a chance to, because I've been busy this week, I haven't had a chance to sort of try out that fusion, try out the strats like that. That'll be something I want to try again. When I get to 1610, this is what I'll say. When I get to 1610, I'll run this dungeon again on all three characters. Because this is my last run. I've done Titan Walk on but I'll do them all again at 1610 and just see how the dungeon is at that because you can over level the dungeon right and you do max damage at 1610 especially against the final boss this boss though i believe you capped it i think it's less than that i don't think this encounter is 1590 the final boss is i don't think this one is i'm not i haven't got any confirmation on that but i don't think it's 1590 so that means you're not you're not doing more damage if you're 1610 in this one but you are on the final boss Yeah, but any time weak like that, if that does happen, then um, get your throw knife on those adds. You'll get that invisibility, you'll get healing. So it, it's a survivable build as well. Like I say, if you're keen, if you're keen hunter man and you sort of, you're confident of staying alive, you really don't need to use this. Just, just pop on Nighthawk, just shoot all the fuses, kill the harpies at the end, do DPS, rinse and repeat not a lot to tell you honestly it's very difficult to talk about it and it's been racking my brain i'll be honest it's been racking my brain why i'm finding it difficult to commentate on this dungeon as a whole and i think i think i know i think i know why because there's no combat experience to the dungeon apart from the final boss a, a couple of occasions where there's supplicants chasing you while the boss does there's some combat experience and what the, what you what what that ends up entailing is is that there's a lot of variations of things that can happen which means there's a lot for me to talk about on what not to do and what to do right uh, or what happens when you do this as opposed to that take this route instead of that route etc etc whereas this dungeon, 80% of it is just rhythm and routine. This boss is very much like that. The, ha the, the, the hardest thing is getting your DPS correct. Once you've cracked DPS, this fight isn't really a fight. It's just, it's just a DPS check. So that's why, as I say, I'm struggling. That's why I'm highly editing them as well, sort of cutting, chopping them up. I don't generally do that. I'm, I, I seem to be, I'm, I'm, bi I'm a bit of a purist that way. I liked... When I post a run of something, I like the full run in its, in its entirety of everything. Like when I'm doing like your Nightfall solos and stuff, I don't chop them up and play music over the top of them and stuff. I don't do that. I do upload them properly and, and do all, all that stuff. But with this dungeon, it feels like it's easier for me to just chop it all up and just get it posted and do less commentary on it. It's just a little bit easier because I say there's only so much I can really tell you about the whole thing. Um, you, you can as well say the boss was quite weak after your third phase. See, I got him down to the ear. You could rush the, all the towers and don't take out the harpies at all and just finish the boss off with your golden gun. 
Um, you don't have to, as I say, clear out the harpies if you, if you haven't got much of a damage check left. I mean, I haven't. I've got probably 20% left. I think I do end up still clearing the harpies. It's not much of a deal to take out the harpies. It's just that it takes your time. Every time, every after every phase, um, well, before every DPS phase, you're having to clear the harpies, which it adds time to your run ultimately. If you really want to, obviously, speed run it and all that stuff, you, that's the last thing you will be doing, obviously. So I think we're on the final tower here. I think, yeah, that's right, we are. So, it'd be, as I said, just rinse and repeat. For obvious reasons, make sure your linear is loaded. Um, I've seen the boss sometimes bug out. Oh, just to be a quick note, if you shoot the eyes too fast, I've seen where the boss bugs out and you're not sure if the boss has been stunned or not but the boss definitely has been stunned and it's weird because you'll try and wither hard the boss and the wither hard just goes flying past the boss and stuff so, uh, uh, there's some weird oddities sometimes um, it's just to pay attention to uh, I don't know, I had that happen to me a couple of times the other day there, I ran it twice back to back and DPS started. Like I hadn't even shot one of the, there was one eye left and it exploded on its own. And then the boss started in the DPS phase, but it wasn't clear what was going on exactly. So I've had some oddities with the Harvey boss sometimes, but for the most part it's been alright, I, I suppose. This this section's just um where you're shooting fuses. I've sped it up. I know it's probably not watchable, so to speak. So, yeah, you can just skip ahead to the um, final boss. This part, obviously, it's just routine, knowing where to shoot the fuses and all that stuff. If you've got any particular questions about it, then just ask the fans. There's a route that you can take for the fans to make them easier. Again, if you're not sure about that, then just ask and I'll explain it. Because, obviously, you won't be able to deci decipher it from the footage. There's basically, like, an insert in the wall where you can jump through the, on that inside and it means the fans don't touch you and you can jump jump down safely it's the same deal as zero hour jump if you remember that it was it's basically the same as that let's talk about rockets though so rockets right now the highest dps on the hunter on on the on the final boss to get the most damage impossible is on gathering storm hothead with a hard i'm not on about warlocks that this is you Particular to hunters, I'm on about what's the highest damage on hunter should you be running? It is Gavron Storm, it's not Blade Barrage. Because I done a, a run by run, I done a Gavron Storm one, and then I done a Blade uh, sorry, I done a Blade Barrage one first before this, and then I done a, a, a DPS check for Gavron Storm, and Gavron Storm was doing way more. Plus, well, not way more, but it was um, better because you could run Font of Wisdom with your Hothead, because obviously you're on an Arc subclass. If you're running a hothead on Blade Barrage, Font of Wisdom ain't working. Obviously, because it's not you're not matching elements. So that is the only reason why I would say... Well, it's not the only reason, because Gavron Storm lasts such a long time on the boss, and you get that stick. Whereas Blade Barrage is re really good on the boss, but it does different amounts of damages at times, because... I don't know why, but it just does. Sometimes it does a little bit more than another time. I've done some testing with it. But it's still overall really, really, like, top tier, like, far better than anything the Titans got for this in terms of super usage, especially when paired with Star Eater skills. But there's not many good solo rockets in the game. There's Season Vengeance, there's Code Duello. Code Duello's all right, but it's outclassed by a lot of other rocket launchers. There was a code I was going to use with Phil Prep last impression. But it, it ain't going to beat. See, here's the thing with damage bonus rockets, like with a damage bonus on them, like, like Vorpal or Last Impression and stuff. That doesn't matter because what you need to look at is the DPS time that you have on the boss. So I've actually timed it. Everybody gets the same amount of time on the boss at damage. It's a 23 second time window for you to do damage. So, like, if you think about it like this, if you're able to get some Wither Horde shots, a super, and then maybe four rockets of Last Impression, like off a core duello or whatever, like a solar one. That's still not going to be better than eight rockets of hothead without um, your stuff, your 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 font of might, uh, font of might and stuff. Yeah, so it's still better just to run a hothead, unless you can get a really good solar rocket with field prep cl uh, clown, which I don't think there is. 
really. Uh, I, I don't think he's in vengeance. I, I, see, I don't think he's in, has got field prep clown, to be honest. I don't think so. So, that, that's the uh, conclusion. I haven't looked through my vault anyways. That was the conclusion I come to. Well, I still want to do Solar because he's the thing. You're getting a good amount of survivability on Solar. You are on Ark as well, to be fair. You are. But I wanted to s uh, stick to the solar build of what I've been running the entire run but obviously different because I've went to Blade Barrage but when I rerun this dungeon back I'm definitely going uh, Gavin Storm right uh, now I didn't do any support builds because what you can do is between phases is run like Assassin's Cow where you can just go in V's and get uh, healing off all the enemies and then swap to Star Eater skills for your orbs of power I didn't want to do that because I wanted to show how you actually survive this fight. Like, you know, relying on a crutch exotic like Assassin's Cowl, you don't need to. You can totally just survive this fight. Yeah? So, you'll see a bit of that gameplay, a little bit more of um, of that. Rather than just punch, dodge, punch, dodge everything. You know, it's sort of like, yeah, I get a little bit fed up, fed up with that times. Just want to shoot some enemies. You know, so I just stuck with the solo overall. But you will see, you you will see, Blair Brass does massive damage. Obviously, this this boss is weakened to super damage because it's a Riven, and that's that's actually a rule for Rivens. Uh, and it's the same for this boss, which means that has to take center stage You'd, in your damage kit. You need to think hard about what super you're going to use. So, like for Hunter. It's obviously all day long going to be Star Eater skills. We'd have a Gavron, Storm, or Blade Barrage, because they're one, one and done supers, which means you can get your super out and then get as many rockets out as possible. I wouldn't recommend Linear Fusion Rifle, even though I've seen people do well with Linears. Right? Rockets are still the player overall. For most people, you want to use just a good rocket. Um, see... Royal Entry was a fantastic pick, but they nerfed its damage. Or they, uh, they changed something with that archetype of rockets. So Hothead's now like the sort of go-to. I think it's adaptive frame. So one mistake I've made here is... Well, I didn't think I'd made a mistake. Because this Minotaur, I was going to get Charge of Light off this Minotaur, but he despawned. So I, I didn't kill the Minotaur in time. So this first phase is unoptimized damage, because I didn't have Charge of Light. But we still do massive damage. So that how you how we start is with a horde, uh, super with a radiant, of course, and then just keep rocketing continually. Get all your rockets out is the key. Don't with a horde too much. At the most, you should be with a horde twice. If you're doing like more than two with a horde sticks, you're overcompensating with a horde damage. Because remember, all you're doing is refreshing the timer on with a horde. You're not actually doing like too much more damage with it. Unless you're like f putting a, a, a wither horde on the floor, then doing a stick to the body. But they've nerfed that. The damage that the wither horde does to on the floor is far less. Well, not that it's far less, it's just the duration's being reduced. Not worth doing at all. All you focus on is the stick. Get your rockets out. So I would do a stick. Two rockets reload, two rockets, then another wither horde. Right? And then get the rest of your rockets out. And then maybe after that, if you've still got time. After eight rockets, then yeah, do another with, with a hard shoe. A key thing as well is, what I was finding is that, obviously, with a hard, the, the weak and clear reloads your weapon, right? Now, it doesn't seem to be working, for me at least, with the clown cartridge. So, if I stored my rocket, it would be like all on hold, so I would only get one, which is worse than like getting a quick reload and firing two rockets off, so my DPS would be worse. So in, in that's another reason why to only really wither hard twice, it's critical to get that rocket launcher out and just keep doing your double rockets reload as quickly as you can. That's why rocket launcher reload is on. That helped out massively. Once I put that on, I thought the field prep would be enough, but the, the downside of field prep is that yeah, but you've got to be crouched and the boss is approaching you quickly. And when you are crouched, you're really slow. So it's like, I'll just get a rocket reloader on. So that way, if I can't crouch to get that quick reload, at least I've still got the rocket loader to rely on. Because you've got to sort of keep backing up as you're doing boss DPS. 
can't just sort of sit in the middle of that zone and be like, oh, I'm going to do two rockets, crouch. I'm going to do another two. You can't. You've got to maneuver the boss. You've got to keep pushing. You've got to keep pulling back a little bit. And sometimes a boss can actually really hurt you. So a backup nade, healer nade on boss damage is also something very favourable. But that damage we've done there is really good, despite we didn't even have the um, energy fire. But we had radiant, so, you know, that's okay, I suppose. But I don't want to make that mistake again. So here's a little tactic. Um... I've got Feast of Light times two. So this is this is actually the most annoying thing. Because the hunter, wor hunter works amazing at this fight. But the only thing with this was, was getting my orbs at times. Uh, when the boss would be annoying or the supplicants would explode before I kill them. So you can maneuver the, you can maneuver the boss and the adds around. You can even break their heads off. Right? And let them come to you. That's a good tactic to use. Um, say if you want to, you can actually have them lured. Uh, you can lure a goblin. Here's a little trick. Before you start off DPS, when you shoot the last fuse, have a couple of goblins' heads took off, but don't kill them. Right? Shoot the last fuse, come all the way to the back room, and then as you're shooting the fuses, some of the goblins should come into this room. Therefore, you can get an easy proc on an elemental well to thus get high energy fire font of might. Which I'm going to do that next time. Obviously when I run Gavron Storm plus Hothead to really push the damage, especially when I get to 16 tanks. I want to see if Solar Two Phase is possible with a Hunter at 16 10. I know it is with Warlock, obvious. That's obvious because of well, but I want to see Solar Two Phase Hunter. There'll be somebody out there probably doing it. But I just want to see if I can get that. That's something I'll do when I get to 16 tanks. As I say, I've still, we've still got levels to gain for more damage. So I'm my energy fire this time. Right. So we'll do Wither Horde Radiant. Because Radiant stacks with the um, Star Eater scale. So make sure that you do your Radiant before that. Uh, and then we can just keep doing our rockets. Notice, look there, reloading my rocket to one. If you saw that footage, I'm just watching it back. Don't let that happen. Seriously, don't let that happen. Um, you want to be doing manual reloads to get those. Make sure that you're getting your eight rockets. That's another thing with field prep, and I've been on about field prep a long time. It's one of the best perks in the game for solo play because it stacks with rocket launcher scavenger. So even if you don't have rocket launcher scavenger on your boots, for whatever reason, say your build wouldn't be able to re uh, require you maybe didn't have the energy for a scav because you're using some unique setup on your boots. It wouldn't matter too much because your rocket still has scavenger on it. It's on the weapon. That's what field prep does. And it will increase its reserves. So this hothead should only have seven. It has eight. So that's three bonuses in one perk. It's just so such a good thing. Oh, like You probably are saying I, I used raw entry for such a long time in a lot of solo GMs. The same role as what I've got, but obviously it's, it was the it was a void. It was just a void version of what I've got now. But actually, it was slightly better because it had tracking built in. So I was sort of a little bit saddened that they, they hit the damage of raw entry, and we you don't see as many raw entries lately. I reckon though, raw entry on a void subclass with Font of Might. Say I ran Teva with raw entry with the field prep clown. I reckon it would do some work in this still. Maybe, as I say, it might not hit as hard as uh, as the as the hothead, but I think it would still do something. I, I'm interested to try st stuff like that as as I get higher in power. And I'm also interested to try other dungeons because uh, the season's still new. I haven't played anything else too much, like dungeon-wise, video-wise. So I'm excited to sort of play other stuff, not just this dungeon, because I play quite a lot of it now. Uh, so, so I'll return to it as I say once 1610 but in the meantime I'll just cover any nightfalls that sort of come out um, obviously GMs aren't around yet but I'll cover the master for each week up until, G up until the Grandmaster date then when Grandmasters come out obviously I'll cover, the, cover those Grandmasters aren't too bad this season um, I guess there's three, there's three semi hard ones 
Um, the glassware corrupted, and I can't mind the other third one that I was thinking. And Scarlet keeps going to be more int uh, actually more interesting this season because they've patched the um, the bug. There was a there was an exploit you could do, not a bug but an exploit where you could kill the boss from up above uh, outside of map out, outside of uh, out of bounds uh, setup. So you can't do that anymore. So Scarlet keeps now in its true form. So that I'll be interested to watch uh, to. To be ruined that I've got a strap for it anyways. It doesn't matter that they, they've patched out of bounds. It doesn't matter to me that they've done that, but um it's gonna make it's gonna make me interested and motivated to run it sort of thing. And Scarlet Keeps never up as a GM. It's barely barely been up. Always um do you need to this is the biggest thing with this fire as well, is you need to make some decisions on the go. Not everything is the same. Right? So if you're like half HP, the boss is right in front of you. Um, you've got some supplicants right to your left, uh, near you, and they're sort of chasing you down. It might be a point to just run away and disengage that little encounter, that little that little section that you've just had, as opposed to sort of stand your ground or try to shoot that fuse or try to f get greedy and, 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 and shoot the fuse because you're trying to speed through it. Because that could get you killed. Because, um, especially if you've not got Void Resist. Now, I've got Void... The best resistance to run for this is Void Resist Concussive Dampener. What Void Resist does, obviously, protects against the Riven. Because the Riven's just doing Void all the time. And Concussive Dampener will help you... Put, it will help you survive a, a... A one explosion of a supplicant. Like, in your face. As in, like, uh, dead on. You will survive it. Two, you will not. Even at 100 resilience and all the bells and whistles, you won't survive two supplicants. Obviously, power... Well, well, you might at 1610. I don't know that. I don't know that because I haven't got to that level. Because obviously, you'll get a bit more resistance as well as your... Well, I think so. Actually, I'm not 100% now. I'm a little confused. I'm not sure if you do get more resistance or not. Yeah, you will do, actually. Because I feel more tanky in this than I than I did um, when I ran this week one, like day one, day two. So yeah, you'll get more resistance as well. So we shoot our five fuses. With the fuses as well, I'm not giving much comment on it because, as I say, it's really sort of like difficult for me to sort of say but you just need to know your routes there's four different alternate routes and they're random which ones come up so you, you could have double right double left you got to know your routes don't even attempt your soul flawless until you are completely familiar with all the routes of the fuses because that is the critical thing of knowing about the entire dungeon so you should be practicing don't like be the type of player that doesn't solo stuff but when a new thing comes out that's soloable um, you go for solar flaws straight away. I see a lot of players, oh, I'm going for solar flaws, I'm going for solar flaws. But they're not a player that does solo, they're just doing it because they're hyped that there's a new dungeon out. Those players need to sort of chill out a little bit and practice everything first. Don't don't even think about solar flaws. You're here to learn it inside and out and learn the entire rhythm of the dungeon. That's what you're here for, and then you will get your solo flawless on the way that's how most players should be looking at it. expert players they'll get them we they'll get them day one day two they won't need videos they'll know the game anyways but as i said I, I, there is a lot of good players who are really good in teams but they don't play solo but when a new dungeon comes out they're, they they want to try solo because it, you know it's something new and it's those players that are at risk of filling themselves to think that they'll get solar force right away, and then they'll have a they'll have a hard thing of thinking, well, are you you're not getting solar force, dear, you know, straight away? Reason is because you're focusing too much on that part as opposed to learning how it feels, the rhythm of it, the whole rhythm of it, because each dungeon has its own rhythm, um, and, and you know stuff. That's why that's why prophecy is probably still my. Uh, favorite dungeon of all time. Obviously, our damage here. There's not much else to commentate. You can see the boss is going to be killed. So if I'd optimized um, 
with that we govern storm font of my with my hothead you can see this is a free phase easy you will free phase solo easy anyone at 16 10 and then even solo two phase so the, the, this boss fight has got to be praised. I like this boss fight. It, it's not too harsh on damage at all. Especially when you're higher. When you're over leveling it, it's not harsh. It's when you're under leveled, it's maybe a little bit harsh. So, yeah, as I say, I, I think Prophecy is still my favourite because it offers some combat experience. Even though it's, not, uh, it's nowhere near as difficult as it used to be. I understand that. But I'm rating it as it came out. Combat difficulty wise, as he as that dungeon released, that weekend was crazy. I remember it. Offered a lot of combat. You know, there wasn't a lot of people who had solo flaws it within the first three days it came out. So it's still probably the best solo experience I've had in this game. In D2. Um probably. A apart from Whisper or Zero Hour, not including those. Other dungeons like Grasp has its own routine, you know. You sort of get the flow, flow with that one. That's not one of my favourites. I honestly think my, f my two favourite uh, uh, dungeons, I would say, is Prophecy and Duality. Duality is top tier. When you go back and look at the mechanics of that dungeon and you look at the flow of it, it's, it's excellent. What's bad about it is the bugs, the bell bugs. But if that didn't exist, if those bugs weren't as bad as they were, then Duality, everyone would have said it was top tier. It is top tier. Very good dungeon. Uh, and very uh, fortunate with DPS windows for bosses, as opposed to what this one's like. But that was the solo flaws for this dungeon on our hunter. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.